what looks like has happened with a thermal visor is that it's running at a really low resolution and they added motion blur on top of that. It's probably running at a low resolution because they probably had performance issues running the thermal visor filters on the switch. Um, the, the way we did all the visors on the GameCube and Wii versions of the game were basically, I, I, I sort of wrote them, uh, Ted Chauvier did the x-ray visor. I didn't write that one directly. Um, I helped with methods for it, but I wrote them to, to really take advantage of the GameCube hardware and to work one-to-one -one with the combat visor. So I've talked about this on Twitter some, but the idea with every visor was as it was, you know, like the way it started was design, the design department would come up and they would, they would say, okay, here's the visors we want to do. We'd like to do X-ray because Super Metroid, obviously, combat, scan, and then we have this idea for a thermal scope, you know, for a thermal visor. And from there, it was like, okay, comes to me and I'm like, well, what's thermal look like? And I'm like looking it up and everything like that. And then I just go go down and figure out how how can we do this given the hardware? How can we do this so it's never more expensive than the combat visor? Because that we we have to run at 60 and we have to always care about worst case. So how so the the top line thing was how can we do that and what hardware tricks can we exploit to get there? And so one thing about thermal that was obvious right from the outset was there's uh, something called a, a palette on on the GameCube hardware where you could basically have a texture and then you could say for for each thing in the texture zero to two fifty five the brightness of the texture you can map that to a literal palette like a painter's palette of colors and so what we did is we mapped brightness to a scale a, a palette from like blue to red to white or whatever and essentially i just said to carl deckard like go into photoshop make me a palette export it and that will be the palette for thermal visor so what we essentially have is if you were to look at like on the hardware what we render underneath is i just turn off all the lights and i just render the base textures and then for things that are marked as hot and thermal, I just jack up their brightness. And then I just put the palette over the screen and bang, you get thermal. You know, what's nice about that is it means it's really no more expensive than the combat visor, but it's also something that we can do on the GameCube that the hardware supports. You know, modern hardware hasn't supported palettes in a really long time. And I imagine they wanted to do some extra post-processing effects. I'm also thinking that for the Switch version, like, like a modern hardware, changing up different things for different materials in the world is not as easy as it used to be. It used to be that I could do like a bunch of low-level code, swap a few things, and like turn off all the lighting or turn off a texture pass or whatever. But with all that PBR stuff I discussed earlier, um, you know, GPUs are more complicated and setting and like tagging different geometry to render and look different ways at different times is actually pretty difficult. So I think what ended up happening is they just wanted to have something similar to the effect, but realized they couldn't hit 60 unless they went really far down in resolution. But once you go far down in resolution, there's only one thing you can really do, which is blur the heck out of it. Two ways to blur it are motion blur or just screen blur. And I am betting you motion blur just looked better than screen blur.